good morning. Pull up a chair. Just having breakfast with Jesus here. I was reading in the Gospel of John these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. There it is. Christmas in two sentences. The Word became flesh, God became human, and was born into the earth. This is one of the most life-giving of Christian doctrines. Because of this doctrine, Christians believe that matter matters. Say that ten times fast. Because God became human in Christ, Christians believe that there is a sacredness to human life from the moment of conception until we draw our last breath. Because matter matters, we also believe the earth on which we walk is very precious, and therefore we're called by God to care for this earth. But not all religions and philosophies out there would agree with us that matter matters. Now, some people hear this word doctrine and their eyes just kind of glaze over, oh, doctrine. Reminds me of when I was a boy and I'd eat breakfast with my two brothers and my sister. We'd just sit at the table and we'd read cereal boxes. Uh, milled corn, sugar, malt flavor, salt, BHD for freshness. I guess it was all we had energy for. I'd love to do a national survey and find out how many people actually read cereal boxes when they were young. It might be mildly comforting. Well, a lot of people treat doctrine the same way. Uh, Trinity, Father, Son, Spirit, BHD for freshness. But the study of doctrine is done properly. It's very practical. And these days, essential. Because typically doctrine, what we believe, shapes our ethics, how we behave. And if there's a doctrine out there that says that infidels are to be annihilated through jihad, to win the favor of Allah? If ever there's a doctrine that shows that matter doesn't matter, that would be it. Well, I want to know who believes that doctrine. We are seeing on display vividly today the impact that doctrine has on life. We've seen it recently in Paris and then in San Bernardino. This is why the bizarre foot-dragging of our president and his administration to not label this as radical Islamic terrorism is not only foolish, but it's dangerous. If you have a cancerous tumor, and your doctor keeps insisting, no, it's gout, it's gout. Your doctor's playing with your life by not diagnosing the real disease. No, we can't and shouldn't prevent Muslims from entering the country. Strange proposal in what is becoming another strange political campaign. But Americans need to get over this political correctness that's in them and start examining carefully Islamic doctrine and history. In fact, all noble, good-hearted Muslims need to be doing the same thing. If you say you love peace, then you need to work to bring about a reformation in your religion. Because right now there's a cancerous evil embedded in your faith. And it's scattered throughout your scriptures, it's splattered across your history, it's modeled by your founder, and right now, 15 to 20 percent of the world's Muslims believe these doctrines. Doesn't that bother you? Some people say, well, this just proves that religion is the problem. Religion is what creates these monsters. Religion is what causes people to unhitch their brains from their bodies. God's not going to fix this. <sighs> That's foolishness as well. Belief in God is not the problem. As if only more people would get over their love affairs with the deity, this world would be a better place. Sorry, but not believing in God creates its own set of darkness and despair. It's not belief in God that's the problem. It's belief in the wrong God. Which brings us back around to doctrine. The belief in God understood properly is the most ennobling, life-giving, love-promoting, peace-inspiring, joy-producing, hope-creating beliefs that there is. The God who came to earth at first Christmas in Jesus Christ is just that sort of good and holy God. You don't have to worry about one of his worshipers popping off a suicide vest in one of your meetings. What you got to worry about with those rascals if they come into your town, they might just set up a food shelf or build a hospital or school or start caring for the poor. The worshippers of this God, and I have 2,000 years of history backing up what I'm going to say next, have been a blessing to the earth. The world has been made a richer, safer, saner, healthier, happier place. 
because followers of Jesus Christ are on the earth. And you can put that one in your Christmas card. <laughs>